May God break our hearts for the things that break his. Many times we go throughout this life and we enjoy the joy of the faith and the excitement and we desire to be happy. But when sorrow comes and pain comes, we don't want to endure that. And part of that sorrow is sorrow and having a sorrowful heart for those who are unsaved. And we need to have a broken heart for that which breaks God's. And what breaks God's heart is when he sees that the lost continue to neglect his word and his revealed revelation that he is God and there is such a thing as God. And when people reject the message of Jesus Christ, that breaks his heart because he doesn't want to send anyone to hell. But he must do it because with love comes justice and justice will be done on that final day. And that is why there is a heaven and a hell. That is why there is a place with God and a place apart from God. Though God's uh, being sustains hell even, his presence is extracted from hell. And that is why hell is such a miserable, damning place because all that is of God is extracted. It's a place of fire. It's a place of torment, not torture, but torment of constantly reviewing over and over all the missed opportunities of coming to Christ when he sent messenger after messenger and message after message and that person rejected him. That, that absolutely breaks God's heart because he doesn't design anyone to damn them. But he does design people and place them in certain aspects within time and space and within families and locations, knowing that no matter where I place this certain person who will ultimately reject me, no matter where I place them, even if uh, they were for a Judas, for example, if they were a Judas planted right next to Jesus and hearing his word daily in and out and still choosing to sell him out and not buy into the faith and sell him out for some silver coins. The Lord knows that those people that are going to reject him and he is going to place them in most likely circumstances where they won't even hear the word regardless. And that's why when people uh, maybe from distant islands end up going to hell, it's not because they never heard the name of Christ because people can still recognize uh, God uh, just by his divine attributes and his invisible attributes. But uh, those people who don't hear the name of Christ and, and choose not to believe in God and they end up going to hell on distant islands, it's mainly because they would have been a Judas even if they were sitting under the preaching and the son of a David Wilkerson or a Paul Washer or A.W. Tozer or Leonard Ravenhill. So we need to pray to God for us to be broken for the things that breaks his. And one of those just mentioned is the lost generation. Those on their way to hell and going to hell. When God is so graciously opening his arms and saying, I'm willing to forgive you, but you must deny yourself and admit that you are a sinner along with the rest of mankind. He's not just pointing a finger at you, at you or me. He's pointing it at all of mankind saying, you are sinners and you are the reason I'm sending my son to die on the cross. You are putting him on the cross, but he went, he does so, and he went lovingly and with all humility and with grace and mercy in his thoughts, with you and I in his thoughts, hoping that we would believe in what he has done, that he died for our sins, that we can enter into new life. And the other thing that we just touched on that breaks God's heart is mainly sin. When we sin, especially as believers, it breaks God's heart. We grieve the Holy Spirit when we constantly sin and uh, go our own way and don't decide to follow His Word. And when we do that, which is contrary to God, because God knows ultimately uh, that we are disobeying, and it grieves His heart that he, we are disobeying Him. But through that even, when we disobey, we are in a sense setting ourselves up to partake with certain aspects as demons, and we are setting ourselves up for failure or regret or shame or troubling consequences through our sin. So God not only recognizes that we are disobeying and it grieves his heart, but also the consequences that are to follow from some of those actions, words, and thoughts. In, because God knows that his way is the best way. And when we don't go his way, which is sin and we're selfish, we end up disrupting 
the flow of the Holy Spirit and we don't walk into the full newness of life that God has for us. So we need to pray for a burdened heart. May we be broken for the things that break God's heart. May we be broken for those on their way to hell. May we intercede with prayer for them that the Holy Spirit would just shine his truth and light upon them and they would heed the conviction and encouragement of the Holy Spirit. And may we be broken for our sin and recognize just how damnable and wicked and evil our sin is and that it is because of us that Christ went to the cross. He didn't just merely love us and that was that. He loved us and he died for our sins. And it's our sin that placed him there. It's our lustful thoughts. It's our prideful thinking. It's our angry outbursts towards our spouse. It's our depressed thoughts. It's our sexual immorality. All of our sin is because Christ went to the cross. And had we not sinned, had we not had the sinful nature in us, then Christ never would have had to go through the horrific torture and torment uh, that we had led him to and that his own creation put him through. So may God give us a broken heart for the things that break his, nor that we may grow closer to God, be more in his will, and pray more accordingly in his will in hopes to see the Spirit move upon us and other people as we distance ourselves from sin, believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, repent of our sins, and walk through this life in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, becoming more righteous and holy each and every day. Yeah.